Now, if you're anything like me, you've been told since an early age that if you go to college and earn a degree, your career trajectory is going to be just fine. But what if that wasn't the case? In fact, it's usually not the case, in particular when it comes to technology jobs like computer programming. There are some significant gaps in degree programs. Now, in times of high demand, those gaps don't matter as much, and employers are still willing to take the risk and train you up. But in a tough market like this, it's important that you take the time on your own to close some of these gaps. And in this video, I'm going to identify the gaps and give you some mitigation strategies for those gaps to better prepare you for the market. And if you're not seeking a college degree, these tips are still gonna be valuable because you're gonna find these gaps in other types of courseware as well. I'm Eric Wise from Skill Foundry, and in my previous life as a coding bootcamp owner, I have spent a lot of time closing these gaps from students who came to me from degree programs. So let's jump right in. The first gap in most degree programs is what I call the lack of integrated learning or the connective tissue. You see, you can only take courses on a semester basis. And what happens a lot of times is you'll take a programming class in year one, you'll take a database class in year two, but you don't actually learn how to hook up that programming language to a database. So there's a lot of students that come out of degree programs that me and my colleagues talk about that know things but can't do stuff. Because without connecting all those concepts together into working applications, you have a gap. Now the mitigation strategy for this is actually pretty simple. Once you get far enough into your degree program that you know a couple things, be sure to take the time to connect them together and build a real application. There's a lot of tutorials out there for doing this. You can supplement it with online courseware if you can't come up with ideas. But at the end of the day, if you go through a degree program and you don't build multiple applications, even if there's just small applications from start to finish, you are going to have a huge gap when it comes to convincing an employer to take a chance on you. Now, the next gap you'll see in degree programs is a lack of modern frameworks and tooling. And this isn't necessarily the university's fault because accredited curriculum just changes much slower than the IT marketplace does. Now to mitigate this, what you should be doing is when you learn a technology stack at university, like let's just say you take a Java course, you should go out and look at a bunch of Java job ads and you should see what frameworks and technologies they are pairing with the Java language and make sure you take the time to experience those on your own, whether it's YouTube videos or online courses or something else. For example, you might take Java in university. A lot of Java jobs require Spring Boot. Very few universities are teaching Spring Boot. That is something you are going to have to learn on your own. So be sure to do the research in the job market of the skills you have versus what the employers are pairing with those skills for actual jobs, because it will be different. Next, let's talk about the gaps in the tooling. Most universities do not teach source control. They do not show project management technologies like Jira or Trello or GitHub. These are all things that real developers use on the job and you might have to play with them on your own, but it's really tough to do that because a lot of those tools are built for team environments. Now, one of the advantages of the university system is the ability to get internships. And one of the best ways to get a job coming out of college, even in a tough market like this, is to land an internship. And that's where you're gonna learn how to use a lot of these project management technologies. But again, there are a lot of videos and resources that can show you at a high level what those tools do and how they interact with the day-to-day -day work of professional developers. And when it comes to source control, that's where you should be storing all of your personal projects. You should sign up for a GitHub account. It's free. You can put your code in there and learn about pulling repositories, pushing things, merging, just the basics. You don't have to become a full-fledged GitHub administrator, but you should be broadly familiar with how to push and pull code from an online repository. Now, this next gap is the biggest one of all. And if you can shrink this gap, your employment prospects are going to go way up. 
and that's the ability to read and understand other people's code and debug it. And this is one that catches a lot of beginning programmers by surprise, because when you're learning to code, you're usually focusing on very small applications that demonstrate concepts, and you're writing a lot of code from scratch. Or if you're given code, it's usually not very complicated code. And that's because it's unrealistic for a content provider to give you a million lines of code to work on. That's just not something that an education company or somebody providing content could do, at least not affordably. So how do you get better at this then? And the answer is open source. Now I'm not telling you that you need to contribute to open source, but I recommend going out finding some small open source projects, and then building your way up in complexity through those projects. And if you do that, if you pull that code down and you examine it and you put some breakpoints in and you really focus on figuring out how that software works and even make some changes for yourself, like I said, you don't have to commit anything, but getting experience diving into somebody else's code and figuring out how it works is going to make your first job a lot easier. Because I'll tell you what, a lot of first jobs, they're gonna put you in the code base and they're gonna assign you bug fixes because they want you to get familiar with the code and to fix those bugs, you need to be good with the debugger and you need to be good with reading other people's code. So it's just gonna save you a lot of pain later if you learn how to do that effectively while you're in school. Now I'm going to talk about two gaps in this part, and these are the two gaps that are going to make you the most money over time if you're able to shrink them. And that is communication skills and business acumen. On the communication skills side, you are frequently going to be asked to present or write down your thoughts or work with non-technical people in your organization. And the more effectively you can communicate with them, the more they're going to like you, the more they're going to appreciate you, the more they're going to ask for you to be on their interesting projects, and that's going to get you promoted and get you raises. So on a college level, when you have electives, I recommend taking some in things like creative writing and public speaking, things that improve your communication skills. Now, when it comes to business acumen, you are going to be working for a company. And if you're working one of the millions of jobs that are out there in insurance, retail, finance, I'm talking about real businesses that hire programmers, having business acumen is an incredibly valuable skill that your employers will recognize. And that's because the technology solution isn't always the right solution. And the newest, sexiest framework sometimes isn't worth the effort. And being able to step back and think objectively about how to solve problems in the best way, given the constraints that the company has, is an incredibly valuable skill. So how do you learn business acumen? It really comes down to two things. First, you have to be willing to study things that aren't necessarily part of technology go out and take classes or read books on finance and accounting and sales and marketing and learn about all the other functions that make a business work. And then the second part involves soft skills. If you go into a company, say an insurance company, and they put you to work on the claims processing part of the application, you should absolutely ask to go sit with some claims processors learn about what they do, watch them use the application, see the things that work well for them, see what they're frustrated about, ask them questions about features they might want or things that they're missing or that are frustrating for them. And if you learn about that business process beyond the technology, you will craft better solutions. And one of the things you'll learn is that sometimes technology is not the solution it could be a process problem. And being able to step back and evaluate processes and technology solutions is how you work your way up the ladder to become a software architect like I was. The thing I loved about being a software architect is I had to master not only the technology and where it was appropriate, 
but I had to deeply understand all the business functions that I worked with. And I loved that constant learning and I loved that interaction with people. So again, taking the time to build those soft skills and study things other than technology will make you a much stronger technology professional. Now, I hope that this discussion on gaps in mitigation strategies in formal education is helpful to anybody who is currently in a degree program or planning on starting one. Degrees still have value. I'll never say that a degree does not have value and you should not go to college, but you need to go into it with your eyes open and be aware of where the gaps are and what you can do to shrink them so that you're a more attractive candidate coming out. And if you're not a part of a degree program and you're just self-studying trying to break into the field, a lot of the things I recommended apply to you too. I know it's a tough market out here in 2023, but even when the market recovers, these things are going to set you apart. Happy coding.